Hey guys, welcome back to the lab. Today at the bench, we'll be prepping the text block by adding spine linings and in sheets. And by the end of this video, the text block will be ready to recase. So this book is an odd shape. It's like a landscape format and it's also very thin. It's more like a booklet. And so that's why I've got it clamped uh, kind of strangely for the spine linings. Um, so the first spine lining I am adhering with wheat starch paste and it will be a, a Tenguja lining. And that is so in the future, um, this lining can come back off. If you pull on it carefully, um, it will actually delaminate from itself. Those Tenguja fibers should split and every other lining above the Tenguja will come off, including some of the Tenguja. And then what's left is a water soluble adhesive that can also be removed. So I like to stipple this lining on and make sure it is very well adhered. And I do that with a flat brush. And then in the course of putting the adhesive on, I actually got some over the shoulders, which I don't like. So I'm going to make sure that all that adhesive has been cleaned off. There's just a tiny bit, but it bothered me um, before it dries. Then I'm going to reorient my working boards, which are just pieces of binders board because this book is tiny. And then I'm going to reclamp it with my tiny clamps that I really love. I use these a lot in projects when they're drying. They seem to work nicely for spines. Then that gets to dry overnight and I come back the next day and take a look at how everything has set and I am pretty pleased with it. And so now I'm going to remove the excess overhanging Tenguzhou. And then we are going to take a look at the spine rounding. It looks pretty good. You can tell it was rounded to start with. It has shoulders already cut in. And so I've just kind of redone that or re-laid that the way it likes to live. And so now I'm going to trim off the excess fibers from the head and tail. Um, the ones at the shoulders or the what will be the joint don't really matter as much because they'll be under the in sheets and paste downs. So now the next lining is Belgian linen and I will trim that to fit with my favorite scissors. And then for my linen lining, to get it to adhere, I like to actually get it wet. Um, I'll take it to the sink, get it wet, and then uh, roll it up and get all the excess water out. What I want is for the linen fibers to be swollen and have water like already in them because the PVA I'm going to use, the water in it, if that linen's dry, the water will just be wicked straight in and it's really hard to get the linen lining to stick if it's just dry like a sponge. So I find it a lot more effective and I think the linen lining sticks better if it's damp to start with. So I've got PVA on the linen and PVA on the back of the spine. And now I'm just going to lay that on, press it into place, make sure it has good adhesion, no air bubbles, nothing weird. And then to make sure it dries evenly and with good contact, I like to use these tiny clamps again. I might have a tiny clamp problem, I don't know. And that dries overnight and I come back the next day and pull all the clamps. And then I like to put a piece of paper in to um, know which way is up. That will come into play later uh, when I put the boards on. One of the big boo-boos I can make is um, actually putting the front and back cover or the rebuilt case on upside down. So I try to just you know, ounce, ounce of prevention that and go ahead and mark which way is up. 
So now I'm taking a piece of 80 pound cover weight mohawk and that's going to be the in sheets. And you're gonna see me take a long time here because this mohawk, I really like it, but um, occasionally I can't tell the grain direction and so I like to be sure. Because for um, pretty much everything in books, you want the grain direction to run uh, head to tail or um, in line, like parallel with the gutter, or you'll have a bad day with like wrinkling and stuff. So I like to double check and make sure um, that everything is good there. And now I'm gonna come in with my thumb and make sure the linen lining is not stuck overlapping that shoulder because I need the shoulder area clear for the um, in sheets that I'm about to tip on. So I'm just gonna mask the area um, that I don't want glue and expose the area. I do want to put PVA. I am going to lay down that PVA adhesive and then separate the two in sheets, clean up a tiny little boo-boo I had there, make sure my mat is clean, and then um, fit this against the very uh, tip of the shoulder. So I do the front and the back with excellent camera work. You can see my hair, but not what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna arrange this um, at the edge under weight against those shoulders um, so that the in sheets can dry in place. It actually doesn't take them long to dry. And I have measured and cut a spine lining, like a paper spine lining, and it will be next to be applied. So PVA on the spine, PVA on the lining, And I just kind of press that into place. And I do want this to stick with good contact. And so I'm coming in with a Teflon folder and making sure that happens. And in case you're curious, I have all my tools and materials listed below in the description. So let me know what I've forgotten to list uh, in the comments because I'm sure I've forgotten some things. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit for a bit and then come back. And now I need to trim out the overhanging linen. It's a little too overhanging. And for most volumes, I just like to use the width of my ruler. It seems to work well. And then I also um, nick the corners on these. They don't really tend to have much structural support, but they do tend to ball up um, and do weird things. So they're more of a, a risk than an asset. So I just like go ahead and take them off. And also any extra threads that might uh, ball up or do anything weird. So now I'm also going to trim the in sheets and paste downs to actually fit. I make them oversized. Um, if these are wonky, it really shows against the turn ins, especially on a dark colored book like this one. Yeah, so I actually just mark these um, with my knife and then come in and uh, trim them using those knife marks.
And I like to trim the paste downs a little shorter than the end sheets because once I put PVA on this piece of paper, it will actually expand in the direction of the foredge of the book, like how the book opens. And so it can stick out past the text block and it looks, um, I don't want to say sloppy, but I don't like the way it looks. And so I like to trim off a few millimeters um, towards the end before the recase. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in this week. Um, in the next video, I'll be rebuilding the case of this book. And so you can tune in for that and be sure to ask any questions you have below um, about this process. And don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying uh, watching me <laughs> work on books every week. Thanks.